We are live at 1105. I think we're on time today. Um, Kevin's car. I bet Kevin's getting excited. It's blue. We've been talking about this for a couple days now. We talked about, uh, oh, by the way, if you're just tuning in, I'm BC with Spirit Cars. Josh behind the camera there, the voice of Spirit Cars. If you happen to call and uh, talk to us, you're probably going to talk to Josh. He's got all the answers for you, whether it be a uh, if you want to buy a turnkey or a, just a kid or whatever. Look, I got a website. You're on here chatting all the time. How do you get on that chat from the website? You just go there and. Yeah, chat. just uh, it'll be on the www.spiritcars.com or on our shopping cart. And uh, there'll be a little, on the bottom right hand side, there'll be a little chat box and you can ask questions. And So if you like to chat, and got some questions while you're looking at the product, you can go there and Josh is usually sitting at his desk. I'm, uh, I'm wounded today. Man, I had this great big cattle, uh, cattle thing in my truck. I got some goats, I gotta go pick up some goats, but I was going to pick up Kevin's frame this morning from the, from the uh, sandblaster, so I was pulling that thing out. Man, it's a big old thing and it come down and I got hit, man, square in the face. I'm a little wounded, I don't know. I've been hit hard, but that's about as hard as I've ever been hit. If it had been a one-two punch, I'd have been knocked out. So, excuse a little, little bruise there. But Kevin, we got your frame sandblasted in his back. We got your car painted. We've talked about this, getting the primer on, getting it prepped, getting all of the surface preparation, how important that was before you even um, put your primer on. Once you got your primer on, sanding that, blocking it, making it straight. Um, talked a little bit about yesterday, even when you're painting, following the line. If you can follow the, can you see through there, Josh? And follow the line through from the, from the colors of the, so you can kind of see the, the lights as you walk around. Just What you don't want to see when it's a car, you want to see all these waves. And the, a curvy car like this, it, it should just be nice kind of contoured lines. And you can see it, a little bit of orange peel, it's not real bad at all. Um, and I said yesterday, if you get a few flaws in the clear, once it's in there, there's enough clear on here, this thing can be wet sanded. We've talked about wet sanding before, but I'm gonna, I'm just gonna show you, I've seen right, right over here, I don't know if you can see that, there's a, there's a little piece of dust here, if you can see that. And I'm gonna just take and nib that off with 2000. I can nib that piece of dust out of there. I'm doing it by hand. You could also do it with a block. You can kind of see it starting to come out there a little bit. I'm looking at it from the light in this direction, but you can probably see it in there. See how it's getting smoother? You sand a little bit more, a little bit more. So that little dust nib is gone, and never to be seen again. When you wet sand and buff that, it'll be gone. Um, so depending on how slick the car is, if you've got a real orange peeling and you got runs, um, here's a secret for I don't have a run on this car to show you, but if you do have a run on the car, if you take a razor blade, a straight razor with the, you know, so you can use on one end, if you shave it and don't go in a in a dip like that, I'll scar it. But if you're on an outside curve, and say I had a run coming down here, if I just took that razor blade and just scuffed it one direction, and once you start, the razor blade always has to go the same direction. Start easy, and just watch, and you can shave that run straight away, and it'll be gone. What will happen if you try to wet sand it by hand like this? Um, you're going to sand, you're going to sand, but what's going to happen, you're going to sand on both sides of the run as well. And by the time you get that run totally out, you're going to have the clear sanded through and maybe even into the paint and you'll have to repaint it. Um, so if you're going to do it strictly by sanding, you can go ahead and take a block and, uh, and do it that way. And if you feel like you're getting too far down, we talked a little bit about windows yesterday. Um, this car was painted last night. So it's less than 24 hours. But I've got about a 24 hour to 48 hour window. If I wet sand like this and buff it, it's gonna buff real easy. 
But if I wait, say, 30 days before I try to wet sand and buff this, it's just going to get extremely hard and extremely hard to buff. So every paint and every clear has got a little bit different uh, characteristics as far as uh, your buff times and your and, and just how you can rework it and, and work with it. But uh, pay attention to the manufacturer, pay attention to the car, the, the car itself. Um, this is all we painted here. Again, when we painted this car, we had the floor wet, the walls were washed down. Uh, even the booth, even though it's a nice booth and seals off good, we put a little two inch tape on the front of the door once the door is closed to keep every air gap on. Uh, if I look around this car, that was what you've seen here. This little dust speck was the worst of what we have. Um, so it's not going to take a whole lot of sanding and a whole lot of buffing on this. But if I would have trash all over this, if I would have painted with a, a dirty, I've been doing a little fondo work this morning, if I'm all dusty and dirty, or if I got all, a bunch of dust coming out of all the areas from the um, just places where dust can hide, and I've got it covered in dust, or if I get runs, or I'm really orange peely, uh, it may take almost as long to wet sand this car to get it ready to buff as it did to prep it for paint. But um, again, that's if you got enough clear on it, you can do that. And if you work within the window, you can wet sand this and clear it back. Now with the the modern activated clears, it's not so much like the old days when you can blend. Um, you can still blend your color if you had a, say you had a paint flaw in here. Um, I mean, thank goodness we don't have any, any flaws in here to point out, but say I had a flaw in this corner and I needed to wet sand it out or I seen something and I sanded it and I went through the clear and I actually went into the paint. I would take and in the case of that, I would probably, since I got a whole panel here, I would probably sand it all the way to right here and all the way to the other side. I sand it all good with say 600 or even a thousand grit, get it like that. Now I've got it, I've got to fix my paint here. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to dust in, I'm going to blend in my blue. I'm not going to paint it all blue again, I'll just blend in my blue. But once I've done that, I'll take my tack rag, make sure I don't have any dust over the edges. And uh, there are different techniques for blending, which I'm not even going to talk about it. Someday we may actually blend something and then I can show you, it'll be a little easier to show it that way. But once I get this color blended back, I'll paint all the way from around here, all the way to the front, and clear it again. That way I don't have no lines where the clear is going to because what will happen when you wet sand and buff it, you may see a, a clear line where, where it shows where that new paint went on top of the old paint. So that's something you need to, if you need to refinish it again, be aware where you break it. And uh, But don't be afraid, you can go back on top of this. Cabinets, I like the color, it's looking good. I'm a, I'm a fan of blue. I got an old Chevy truck and I was thinking about painting blue and I may actually take this color. I like it a lot. So. I've got the frame, we picked up the frame, uh, we're getting some of the other panels done. Again, we didn't do too much, we've got the door and the deck to the paint. I've got a bunch of pieces from the chassis and the, and the chassis itself to paint. So what we're going to do is we'll push this out of the booth now. And you can see in the booth here, we've got a lot of things we can hang stuff on. I've got a big rack we're pulling in, put a lot of parts on. Uh, tomorrow we'll see that, you probably see all that hanging. We'll get the deck lid done. Paint the inside and the outside at the same time. Uh, paint the doors inside and outside at the same time. Um, be careful. This is an easy color to match. It covers well. We know how many coats of paint we got out here to get it to this color. We had a, a gray sealer underneath of it, so we don't have a, a, to worry about that. I'm sorry, we put a white sealer under this one. Um, so this is ready to seal. I have a white sealer on that, put the same amount of coats that when we put the uh, deck lid on, it's going to match, right? Because it's going to have a butt match. It's going to go from where it goes on the car to where it goes on the deck lid. Just, it's going to butt right together. So you want to make sure, especially in those kind of areas, it's going to match pretty well. Um, some special techniques it takes to get a bare frame. Um, you want to make sure the paint's going to stick. You just can't put any paint on a bare frame. You need to self-etching type primer. We'll kind of go over some of that tomorrow. Um, 
of what a self etching primer is. There's a little bit of acid in the uh, in the primer itself, so it uh, it fights into that that bare metal. Where when you go on top of the gel coat, uh, I say this a lot. I'll say it again. I reference Spear. When Spear built the fiberglass car, the gel coat we use is a sandable gel. It's a little bit softer than a, a say a boat that would have a more hard uh, gel coat that's not sanded. It's when it comes out of the mold in a boat, that's what you get. But when it comes out of the mold for the, our cars, um, we always expect that you're going to sand it and prep it and prime it and paint it. So uh, you can use just a regular K200 primer or something like that. Where on the, the, the frame, you're going to have to use an etching primer. So Kevin, I'm looking at a pretty cool car here. It's coming together. I uh, talked to you yesterday, and I think you talked to Josh. Uh, tomorrow, you'll probably see your frame coming together, and we may just follow it through. Um, I'm hoping to get the frame back over in the assembly area Monday. Uh, we'll get the motor painted this weekend and everything, I'm hoping. Uh, maybe Monday we'll see this car come together, and uh, we can assemble the frame back together. He's already had it put together. and. Uh, so we're just going to put it back together, run a couple of new brake lines and change a couple of things, minor things that when we took it apart, it, it could be a little different. So we're going to do that. We have any questions? Nobody questioning anything. Here's your chance. I'm going to tell you again, if you like to see the program live, a lot of people watch it after it's already been on, the, on Facebook and uh, you'll be seeing it in the evening or whatever. But if you're watching it live right now and you want to see these programs that Spirit does, when we go live, there's a button on there that says follow. You have to hit that button while we are live, and then it will notify you that we're going live, and, and then you can watch the program live. And if you do have a question, if you do have a, uh, want to tell us something, go ahead and let us know now, and I, I'd be glad to answer any questions. We really want to take this and make it a technical couple minutes at lunchtime, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. I know I ran over 20 minutes or so the last couple, but there's really a lot of information on it when it comes to painting, and um, I hope I didn't give too much information with nothing specific, but uh, again, we don't want to have a drama show, we don't want to have a reality show, we'll just keep doing this as long as people watch it and, and uh, want to see their cars coming together. Right now, I bet Kevin is the most excited person, person watching today, so. Uh, I finish up by reading a little thing from Hot Rod Man, we'll go with co coffee break contemplation today. This is just a little thought by Ernie. I just randomly picked one and today we'll go with throwing money at a problem does not create a solution, but creativity and cooperation do. So good, I like that one. Throwing money at a problem does not create a solution but creativity and cooperation do. So there's the thought for today. We will see you tomorrow, and we'll see the rest of this car coming together tomorrow. Have a good...